All right, grade two, I have unit six coming at you. And here are the notes. And what I did at the beginning of these notes is because I, I look at this stuff as I am looking through lessons from the years before and looking at what Bridges advises now, I keep in mind the standards. So I have just copy and pasted for you Common Core standard here for geometry for unit six the main ideas for grade two, and then here is the unpacked content of those standards if you just wanted to peruse those, because I look at those to make sure we're just focusing on what we need to. Um, all right, so here's the new math room. If you hit that up, see what it's like. I have some spring fever, so made it about spring. Uh, if you go to uh, the 2D shapes over here, you're going to have all sorts of practice with quadrilaterals. Okay, and then if I go back to the home page, now we have our addition and subtraction that's been on there for a long time. These games are new for the unit. These are the unit six games and not necessarily like the, this one and this one. And this one, I'm, I wouldn't say are games. They're just like practice. This is some practice stuff just with pattern blocks, having fun with pattern blocks. This one is an actual game. Okay, so if I go back, now the music, that's a new button. Just of different songs that I put within the lessons that a kid might want to listen to on their own. Um, the home button is going to take you to the main ideas of unit six, three of them. And then math at home, if you ever want to use any of these cool activities set out by Bridges, this could be for parents to have at home or also for you to peruse for any um, activities that you would want to do with your kids um, as you go through the unit. So if I go back into that and go back to the home page, you have the counting that we've had on there every time new books, book read-alouds that I've put within the lesson also that a kid might want to look at, Khan Academy they've had before, but this time this is the unit of geometry. And when they click here, I circled it, but they can just work on any of these practice sessions on the right and try some of these on their own, which is good practice for like NWA test. Okay, so going back, I think that's pretty much it, except some other activities for um, the number corner. Okay, all right, if I go to the notes, new smart board file, this one has various activities that I talk through down here, so you can take a look at that if you want to use it. Okay, so I start with, it's kind of week by week, um, day one, Warm up is always some type of computation place value. I would do this every single day all through the unit. I think I only put it in this first week, but I would keep on doing it for the entire thing. I just put all the warm ups that I had for that unit in one smart board file, so you could just keep going back to it and take from there. You could also print those out for kids to do. So this is the smart board file of them. And so if I go to file print, then I'm going to put on there which pages down here that I want. So let's say I just want page 18, there it is, or maybe I want page 16 through 18, and you can make them, um, instead of really, like really small is going to put like four of them on one, but if I go large, two of them are on one, so you could like cut them out and just give them out each day, daily, instead of a huge packet. They just get one little paper of computation daily. So that's that. Um, how you'd start this off, unit six with shapes. Uh, Jack Hartman has a good shape song if you want, or this polygon song, and then you just get those pattern blocks out. I, me personally, would place a pile at each table and let them play first and then put back into a pile and start talking shapes. So the idea of 2D versus 3D. You probably have already brought this up in Number Corner, but again, bringing it up, me, I like to uh, have them use their hands and put up 2D, means two dimensions, and then touch it, length and width. And 2D shapes are flat, they are flat. 
okay? If I go 3D, that's three dimensions. We have length, we have width, and we have height. So then I literally have them touch their toes and go all the way up and say height, like our height. 3D shapes have height. And so now we talk about our pattern blocks. Are those 2D or 3D? They're 2D, they're flat shapes. But we can try to make them into 3D shapes, right, by building and giving them height, building them up. So students hold up the shape, then they would be putting them back into a pile, and then you start calling out shape clues or just the shape. Like, I want you to hold up the triangle. I want you to hold up the trapezoid. Uh, I am thinking of a shape that has three sides. I am thinking of a shape that has three angles. I am thinking of a shape that has four vertices and all the sides are the same. Okay, so you're kind of uh, just working that way and getting those names out there of those uh, pattern blocks. I would incorporate square pattern blocks and rectangles. I know I don't think your set has them, but I have loads of them in my room if you would like to make use of those, and I have a lot of rectangles too. Okay, um, then day two, same as day before. You could use the pattern block app to do it up on the screen with them, and then uh, introduce the kids to the game Last Shape In Wins. Um, there is a pretest if you want to use it for unit six. And then day four, reading the greedy triangle and you making use of a geo board and having the students follow along with the story by making all those shapes that he turns into. Uh, you could have the kids have their geo board as you're reading it, but that might be a major distraction. So having them have it at their desks where you're reading the book to them at the front and then they go running back to try to make it and then come back to the uh, floor to re keep reading so they're not totally distracted with their geo board. Um, so week one, just trying to give you some ideas of how you can introduce the idea of 2D, 3D and kind of play around with it while giving the unit pretest if you want um, and reading that book. Uh, week two, now we really get into it with attributes of 2D shapes. So we start with a cut and sort. So I put this together. Um, so you'd hand this out. You'd have kids cutting out those pieces, you wouldn't literally have them cut the shape. Like you're not going to have them go here and cut out this triangle. You would have them cut this rectangle that has a triangle on it. Then they're going to cut this piece. So they're going to have all these pieces and then you would ask them to sort them however they think. Sort them however you think. And then hopefully someone will have sorted them into three-sided shapes and four-sided shapes. Like, these are triangles and these aren't, okay? And now, let's talk about that. Yeah, these are triangles and look at these are not just equilateral triangles. We have all these different looking triangles. They all have three sides and three angles. And then the quadrilaterals. Oh, now we can start naming these. There are different types of quadrilaterals. So then come day two, there's a number of great quadrilateral song and then we play Guess My Shape. Um, with these riddles that is in the smart board file for you to look at. Here is the template that the kids, uh, Bridges has them cutting them out. Me personally, I would not. I would just put this in a transparency and uh, have them cross out with a whiteboard marker which ones they eliminate based on the uh, clues you give. Okay, day three, there's another song. This is one of my absolute favorites. I use it with quadrilaterals, um, but I don't have them watch the song. I just have them listen to it. And really, I mainly just use the one, two, three, four, I'm a quadrilateral that goes with the Pitbull song. Um, and then they would practice drawing these 2D and 3D shapes based on your clues. So I'm thinking of a 2D shape with three angles. What are you going to draw? We look at everybody's drawings and see if they came up with a triangle. Okay, so you just go through and we just have fun practicing drawing shapes. Uh, I did not, you just come up with your own. These are ones I was just coming up with. You, I did not put one there about a cube. So you guys probably want to practice drawing a cube together. Uh, day four, um, this is, you know, take it whatever way you want. This is just an idea by me, but play I Spy 
You could I spy around the room. You could I spy around the outside. Um, you could have it be anywhere. This video gives an idea of looking at art and spying stuff, or here's some other quadrilateral art ideas, or maybe you have one of your own. All right, then week three, going into area. So bridges, as you look through those materials, and as you've done in the past, they've used pattern blocks, and you look at triangles first, how many triangles would this take up? How many rhombuses would this take up? I skipped all that. Just go straight to square units. So, I mean, area is square units. So that's what we want to get in kids' heads. Um, so day one, there is a book read aloud here, or maybe you have another one that would introduce area. And it, of course, perimeters hanging out with area. This book, I'm saying you could just read the first five minutes. You could go through the whole thing, but that's after they've talked about perimeter and area. And then you could take out your colored tiles and say, what shape are these? They're squares. Oh my gosh, all the sides are the same. Okay, let's be more precise and measure them. And then notice that each one is one inch. And so these are actually called square inches. So now we can actually measure the area of things and say how many square inches it takes up. So what would a square foot look like? So use actual rulers and make a square foot and see, okay, could you stand up in a square inch or a square foot? How about a group of four kids, could they? And then maybe uh, discuss the uh, square yard. How big is that if we use a yardstick? just having fun with squares of stuff. Then day two, start with tiling various rectangles. You'll see it in the smart board file. Here's the PDF. Make note, I put, that the PDF I put here, you probably don't want to print from that. You'll probably want to go to your Bridges Unit 6 file and find it there so that the dimensions are actually correct and it'll actually work, okay? All right, day three, exploring with area. I got this from grade three, but it's good for you guys too, of just measuring things, a few things with tiles and uh, seeing how many square inches it would be. And then this is an activity from Number Corner where they become rectangle hunters in April, but I thought, why not just do it within unit six, which will probably be in April. So you as a teacher would come prepared with different colored rectangles um, that you have pre-made based on certain numbers um, that you, you could just use these numbers that they have here, 13 through 22, and you've made all these different rectangles, like this green one might be the, uh, 14 number, because you made that by making two rows of seven, but they don't know that, they can't see how many tiles you used, but they're using their detectiveness to try to figure out which one, and then use tiles to see if it actually works, so pretty fun activity I thought you could do just within unit six. Um, then day five, going to geoboards and seeing area show up on geoboards. So you can see that in the PDF. It's also in the smart board file. Other resources are here. I did not do anything with the patchwork quilt squares. I bypassed that. If you love that last year, go forth and do it again. I have parts of it in the smart board file. All right, week four, last one is fractions, all about fractions. If you look at the common core standards and the unpacked content, it's all about halves, thirds, and fourths. So these ideas, um, I didn't think they had enough in the Bridges Unit 6 of those ideas. So I incorporated some of the intervention materials here. So the first idea would be paper folding with circles and rectangles. So the day one, you do it with circles. And each kid would cut the circles into halves and label them one half, one half. And then they'd cut a circle into thirds and label those and cut them into fourths and label those. Yeah, it's going to get messy, but kids need to actually see it. And then you would have them um, hold up things that you say, okay, I want you to hold up uh, one third of the circle right? And they're holding up a third. Okay, I want you to hold up three thirds of the circle. Oh, that's the whole circle. Yeah, so there's all these different things you could say, and then you can play this circle fraction game where they try to fill four circles. Um, the rules of the game are below, so you can read through them. It's from the intervention materials. And then day two, same thing, but with rectangles. And then fraction pages, practice pages from the intervention materials. And then you have the sandwich story problem that you may remember that's in the smart board file. Geoboard 
uh, is another place to work on halves, fourths, and thirds. Bye!